Is it hot enough to fry, <laughs> fry an egg out here? Let's find out. Yes, it is. Okay, so maybe it wasn't hot enough to fry an egg that fast outside. Yeah, maybe we lied just a little bit, but we did camp in some extremely hot weather recently. Yeah, we're gonna share the tips with you that we found to keep cool inside. We recently spent three fairly miserable weeks in Las Vegas in the summer. Super hot. Holy moly. I'm dead. Taxi. I'm dying. I'm dead. I'm finished. We shared our camping in cold weather tips with you several months ago. Now, unfortunately, we've learned how to deal with extreme heat because the past few places that we've stayed has been way too hot for our liking. Yeah. Our first and biggest tip about camping in 120 degree heat is don't. Just don't do Just it. Just don't do it. Avoid it. <laughs> Seriously. We couldn't avoid it because we had some commitments that we had to stay in a certain area for a while. Mm -hmm. So we were forced to figure out how we could try and stay cool when it was 120 degrees outside. 120 degrees. Yeah. No exaggeration. Yeah. It was just absolutely miserable. And we were forced to kind of look around us and see what other people were doing and come up with some tips that we've used before. Obviously, one of the biggest players when you're camping in heat is your air conditioning. So the, the biggest player. <laughs> it's the biggest players. So our first set of tips is around that. Number one is the voltage at the pedestal. First of all, you're going to want to be on full hookups. The generator and the heat and the three ACs just can't handle it unless you've got a super, super beefy generator like Phil and Stacy. Don't try and boondock when it's 110 degrees outside. We tried it. It was not pleasant. It was not We will share that with you when we get to that video. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be 110. We could do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. We could do 110 if we can run our generator and run all three ACs. But we're having problems with our Go Power inverter. The boondocking style that we want to do is when the weather is nice. And, you know, we could run one AC here and have the solar replenishing it and run a good chunk of the day, I think. Yeah. But we need more than one AC when it's 110. Yeah. yeah. And when we got to our hottest location of all time, which was Las Vegas. Vegas, baby, Vegas! One of the problems we ran into was voltage. The voltage at this RV park was low. We're talking like 103 We're talking volts. this This RV park needs to upgrade their electrical system. Right. Big time. So if you're gonna book somewhere, maybe call and ask them, hey, how's your electrical system? Can it handle this heat? Sorry. And gluing your butt to the truck seat, it's making you sweat like a farm animal. And I want something better. Just yesterday, we got a cancellation notice in our email mm -hmm. from a place that we were heading to next that said, sorry, we have to cancel your reservation because your RV is too large and we have a heat wave going on and we won't be able to support mm -hmm. your RV. Engines are overloading. More power. We're superheating. The thing is, they knew they have an electrical problem and they're working with their electrician to fix it, uh, but they let us know. The RV park in Las Vegas, on the other hand, not so much. We had to go through three sites. Phil and Stacy had to go through four before we finally got voltage that would even work. We're talking like 115 volts-ish. So I got the uh, AC to come on, but now this blue. See, we've only got... We have 112 volts on line one now, but we only have 105, 104 on line two. The voltage goes down, the amperage has to go up to make stuff run. It's tripped our breaker once, it's so stinking hot. I've only got 104 volts on line two, and, I only, and we're pulling 25 amps, and all I have running is the AC. 107 inside. Now, you guys probably know when we say Phil and Stacy, we're talking about our friends, Phil and Stacy, who have the YouTube channel, You, Me, and the RV. Mm -hmm. If you've never seen them, go check them out. We think they're pretty awesome. Yeah. Long story short on that, when your voltage is low, your compressor and your AC wants to pull the same amount of wattage. So to make up that difference, it has to pull extra current. This extra current is likely going to blow your breakers inside. And trying to convince an RV park that breakers inside your RV blowing are their fault is an uphill battle, trust we me. We got the response of, well, maybe you shouldn't run three ACs. It's 120. We're paying for full hookups, so we want full hookups, right? Mm -hmm. So we had to figure out how to stay cool 
we finally got to a site that actually worked without mm -hmm. blowing. Sort finally. of. Finally. Sort of. Yes. It was still a little bit low and we had some trouble and we're going to get into that. So are you just scoping out the third site that we're going to give it a Yeah, give we're going to give it a, give a third site a try. If Goldilocks taught us anything, this one should be just right. That's <laughs> <laughs> we are delirious. We have been here for three hours. We got here at three o'clock. It is now six o'clock and we have not yet been able to set up. It is still, um, the truck says it's 122. The truck says 122. 122. <laughs> One of the best things you can do is to improve your AC's efficiency by doing maintenance. Now we did a separate video on this. It's not difficult at all. You can do it yourself very easily as long as you're comfortable getting on your roof. But it's a matter of just making those compressor coils and condenser coils and the evaporator coils more efficient, getting the junk out of there. Cleaning those helps a bit, and we did that as soon as we got there. Well, and it had been a while since we had done it. Since we made and the last video. It was, I wasn't going to say that. I wasn't going to call you out on that. You know, we're just so busy, and I know, like a lot of you, you're so busy, so you forget. You remember it needs to be done when you are melting inside your RV. So, Very true. you know, you did that and you did find some things needed to be cleaned up. Oh, yeah. And that definitely helped. That helped for sure. Another thing that you can do if you're right on the edge like we were, because we were down, getting down around 115, 113 volts, which was still good under normal circumstances. But in this extreme heat, we're still blowing our breakers maybe a couple times a day. So I pulled the panel off of our breaker panel and put a fan on it. And that seemed to mitigate that when you're right on the edge there because those breakers are triggered and controlled by heat. So if you can cool them off a little bit, it kind of helps them reach their rating without blowing too soon when it's super, super hot. So we're lucky that our breaker panel is very easily accessible mm -hmm. right down here. So we could just aim a fan right on it. Yeah, and that worked out. We were able to keep the ACs running all the time. Did you tell them the voltage level where the box should be? Ideally, you want it to be about 120 volts maybe 121, 122, but right around there. And the closer you are to 120, the better off you're gonna be. What was the first site that we got? 103. <laughs> wah, wah, what no way. What was the second site, do you remember? No, but it was all, they were all low mm -hmm. like that. Something else to keep in mind is if you can park in shade, that's ideal. This campground had zero shade, of course. It's just like one strike after another, right? There mm -hmm. were palm trees everywhere, but the palm trees, I think they must have been fairly young because the palms themselves were like this big. Yeah. Didn't and, provide any shade. And all. this entire RV park was like blacktop pavement. <laughs> but that does bring us to the next section of tips, which is shade. Shade, if you can park under it, great. If not, try to create some. Your awnings are a great resource. If you've got sun on that side where your awnings are, get those out if you can. Any shade you can supply there is critical. Also, we saw a lot of people shading the roofs of their RVs or at least their AC units with like little tarp things and things like that. Mm -hmm. I also found a really cool product that we'll put on the screen that's designed for this. So if you're gonna be in this situation for a while, this might be a good investment. It shades your roof because the sun beating on these black cowlings for these ACs it just creates heat. So another thing I did was I took the back half of our, I call it a cowling, I think that's an aircraft reference. I'm gonna get up there and clean it real quick and I'm gonna leave the shroud off and see if that helps our situation. So as you can see, a little dirty. But I took the back cover off to kind of let the condenser coils just be wide open. Get some uh, airflow in yeah, there. Yeah, get some airflow in there. We, we had to do every little thing we could. Do they make them white? I have, I, you know, I've seen covers online that are white that you can buy as a replacement, so that might be an option too. But I think that's a great option. Now, the product he was talking about, we haven't tried, so no. we don't know how well it works, but it seems like a really cool product and a really great idea if you're going to be RVing in extreme heat with a lot of sun. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say that we have a grand design. Our neighbors next door who had just as many problems as we did had, uh, was it a Lux or a DRV? Much more expensive fifth wheel than what we have. And they had tarps and all kinds of stuff covering and shading their AC units in their refrigerator because they were having just as much trouble. Yeah, and we even saw some higher end like Integras and things mm -hmm. like that in there with covers over sure. them too. So another tip that we have is to get it as cold as you can at night, colder than you normally would. <laughs> so it was a bit of a swing because we would have to run all three ACs all night and get the temperature inside down to about 65-ish. I don't like that. Now, take in, keep in mind that the temps at night were still in the hundreds. Mm, yeah, the low temperatures at night where we were were like 100, 101, 
102. Yeah, there's nothing like taking Daisy out at 11 o'clock at night and having the wind blow my eyeballs dry like a hair dryer. It was so hot, the second you walked <laughs> outside, your skin started to steam. It hurt your skin. It was so hot. It was horrible. <sighs> What we would do is we would get the AC as low as possible, which means there's further for the dial to move in the afternoon, right? Now we would still get up to like high 80s, sometimes in the 90s, but again, running all three ACs constantly helped mitigate some of that. Now we had to wear, you know, jackets in the morning inside in the desert, <laughs> but you do what you got to do to try to stay cool in the afternoon. For me, the reason that I don't really like it that much isn't necessarily the temperature, it's the constant running of the AC noise. Yeah. I just am noise sensitive, so I don't like that. I don't like having that in the bedroom because the AC unit's right above our heads, really. Yeah. So for me, I don't really like that noise. Yeah. Another AC item that really helped us quite a bit was our RV airflows. Now we did a separate video on that, so you can go check that out. We'll have a link below. But what they do is they essentially take a system like ours that's ducted. They only work on ducted systems, but they direct all of the airflow into the ducts and turn your entire plenum into intake. So it makes that part really efficient. Another benefit of that is it gives us a little bit more control. So for instance, if we wanted to in the afternoons, we could close the office off cover up those ducts and let that rear AC work with the other two ACs to cool just these two rooms. So it gives you a little bit of control over, con you know, directing the flow of air. It does require you to like tape up some of your vents sometimes and get a little bit hacky there. So those are now taped off. We're going to close off the garage and force all of that air into the living room. I'm also going to pull down the vents in there just to provide zero resistance coming out of those. So AC, 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 we've talked about keeping, you know, getting the AC, getting it as cool as we can in here. Second part of this is keeping the heat out. These RVs are, are very porous, so anything you can do helps. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, we would keep the blackout shades pulled down. Mm -hmm. We would put Reflectix in the windows if you're not familiar with what Reflectix is. That's gonna be a horrible noise. <laughs> I'll put it down. Thank you. <laughs> but we would put those in the windows, especially in the bedroom, because the windows are right around our heads. Mm -hmm. If you've got enough of it, just put it in every window. If you're in a situation where the east to west sun is going across your RV, move them from one side to the other, do whatever you can to keep that sun side, keep the reflectance in there. And if you have to, just put them in all the windows. Now this stuff comes in rolls and then you cut it just a little bit larger than the window opening and you shove it in, it's super easy. Also, when we had to go outside, we would do it as quickly as possible. Yeah, keep that door closed as much as possible. In and out, in and out. You got mad at me one time, we're slamming the door. I'm I was to taking be... a nap, I was <laughs> taking a nap. And he I was walked, trying to be fast. He walked out and bam, slammed the door. Mm -hmm. Woke me up. Another tip that we just recently purchased are these guys. Fancy little pillows. You can sleep on them. Mm. So these things are basically little foam square pillows. They are 14 by 14 and designed to go directly into your max air. Mm -hmm. And how they go in will depend on how deep that section is, but they are very flexible. Also the Reflectix on one side, put one of these up in heat and then pull it down and feel it. It's keeping a lot of heat out. Yeah. So we've got two of these simply because the one in the bathroom in the rear, we just close that bathroom off entirely. Mm -hmm. There are a few different options for these pillows on Amazon. We do have some links for you. Mm -hmm. They also make ones that will fit into the standard shower mm -hmm. highlight, which I think is like 14 by 24 or something. I forget, but they make those for that as well. However, we just put Reflectix in our shower and used command strips. Yeah, we actually had a piece already cut for the shower skylight because when I'm having a migraine or really bad headaches, it's really bright in there. And so I like to keep the light out sometimes. So we just put that one up. And speaking of the garage in the garage bathroom, the garage for us in toy haulers, I think in general, is a source of heat because I don't believe that it's as insulated back there as the rest of the RV is. Yeah. So we keep the ramp door closed. Mm -hmm. We keep the ramp door closed when it's really cold outside as well. Yeah, get as many layers as you can back there. We have our new three season doors, so we make sure the glass is closed on those, mm -hmm. the doors are closed, and we also close the blackout curtains. So mm -hmm. we've got the curtains, the door, and the ramp door 
all closed to keep that out back And there. Reflectix in the windows back there as well. Absolutely. I also mentioned that that front bathroom has no vent in it. So I just kept that door closed and considered that entire area kind of off limits. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that garage, if you don't need it, if you're just using it as garage space and not as an office like we are, shut the whole thing down. Shut it down. Oh! I mean, the whole thing is a leak fest back there as far as insulation goes. So just close it off, close your vents off. If you have RV airflow like we do, you can just use that rear AC to help in the front. So that's also an option is to use that garage as an insulative barrier. We did a, a day or two close off the office mm -hmm. and it definitely kept it a little bit cooler inside here in yeah. the main living area. So it was a noticeable difference. Mm -hmm. Another tip is don't cook inside the RV if you don't have to. Yeah, why I like generate? That one. I like it. <laughs> why generate more heat? You need help with the grill, Eddie? No thanks, Clark. Don't have one. If you are gonna cook and you have a convection microwave like we do, at least that vents to the outside, mm -hmm. whereas the oven and the stove, any heat that that generates is pretty much gonna end up inside the RV. Yeah. So. Chipotle carry out, there you go. Delivery, go into a restaurant where the AC is actually oh, working, yes. you know, any relief that you can get. I like the no cooking part. Definitely. We also had a big problem keeping our refrigerator cool while we were in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Particularly when we first got there because we were having so many power problems and the power was going on and off. All the food in our fridge was <sighs> garbage. We had to get rid of it. And while we were there, we did have trouble keeping it in the 30s. Absorption fridges, RV fridges, are not very efficient. They're not great and they have to create heat to create cooling and in the desert heat it's just very very difficult for that thing to, to cycle the air through. We do have a refrigeration maintenance video that we did a while mm -hmm. back. If you are concerned about doing some maintenance or maybe you need to do some maintenance, go check that out. Yeah, do that maintenance before you get to where <laughs> it's really hot, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like yeah. us. Yeah. You know, get your defrost done, your seals, you check all that stuff. We'll have a link for that video. Another thing you can do is try to help the air flow through there. I tried a couple of different methods using a box fan. I found out the best way was to put the box fan on the top half of the fridge and have it pulling air out. We now, looked pretty... Pretty janky. Pretty janky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was it was quite funny, but we weren't the only ones with fans on the outside. Oh, yeah. Like it was, so, it was and, the and nobody was outside to pay attention to it anyhow, so That's it's true. okay. <laughs> That's true. We were definitely all... Uh, Beverly Hillbillies up in that yeah. place. <laughs> what does that sign say? It says Beverly Hills. You get that, Granny? We're dying. So we had that fan up there. Now, a lot of you have also sent in pictures where you've done modifications and installed like box fans or um, case fans up in there to pull mm -hmm. air through and they're, you know, constantly running. Uh, that can help also. But just like the front door, Keep that fridge door open as little as possible. Do you want to mention soft starts? I know that we don't use them, but they can oh, be yeah. very helpful. Yeah, that's true. So we do actually have some. We just haven't installed them because we're trying to kind of build a use case for them. Mm -hmm. But an AC soft start will basically take that initial surge of current from your compressor and lower it. So it basically it helps start the AC softly. We do have a link below in the description for the soft starts that our friends Eric and Tammy of Techno RV, these are the ones that they recommend and we mm -hmm. trust their judgment on this stuff. So yeah. if you are looking for some, go check out Techno RV and their recommendations for these soft starts. Yeah, they're basically, if you're having trouble starting your AC on like a generator or inverter or an extreme heat where that initial boost of energy, that surge of current that the compressor has, that's causing you to blow things or shut off things, then those will definitely benefit you. We got some other bonus tips too. Yeah, because I know a lot of you are going to talk about auto formers for the voltage issue. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Hughes makes an auto former, and we've talked a little bit about this in some of our other videos, but essentially what this thing does is if you're below, I think, 110 volts, it tries to boost your voltage up to 120, or if it's below, 100 it does a double boost i'm not sure when the you exact say parameters if you're below do you mean like, if the if the electrical box is yes. below okay yeah. so in that situation where we had 103 amps it would have definitely helped now if we were at 113 i don't know if it would have helped but the idea here is it uses extra current to make up for voltage 
Now this is great for the person using the auto former, mm -hmm. but it can be detrimental to everybody else on the line because now you're pulling more current. So there's a little bit of controversy around these. There was also some talk about the electrical code being modified to make them like illegal or something. I don't know. I don't know where that is. We don't have one. We haven't used one, but it's something I wish we would have had when we first got there. Yeah. But did. our neighbors are probably glad we didn't. <laughs> yeah. Another bonus tip in regards to boondocking is getting a beefy generator. Yeah, ours is a 5500, so it's right on the edge of being able to run all three ACs. And when we add in extreme heat, the generator has to work harder, the ACs work harder, and it just did not go well <laughs> at all. Now, one thing I found that we had an issue with was our generator was putting out a little bit low voltage and a little bit low frequency. Now that can be difficult to see unless you have a good multimeter. We happen to have readouts on our Go Power inverter and I adjusted the altitude adjustment on the generator, which helped a little bit, but I also had to adjust the governor and I'll put a little bit of info in there on that. Uh, but it's really just cranking it up a little bit and I was able to get up to 120 volts at 60 Hertz and that helped out a bit. And you were talking about when we're boondocking. When we're boondocking. Right. If you can avoid it, don't. Just don't boondock in high heat. Just don't do it. Even with all those things, we barely survive <laughs> the, the heat wave. This heat wave, I think, has affected so many people all across the country and is still going on right now, which is why we wanted to share these tips with you guys. We survived it. We didn't have to leave, even though we wanted to. We couldn't. <laughs> but it it was okay yeah. we had a lot of fun and we're going to share all the fun that we had when we were in vegas mm -hmm. with our friends phil and stacy and filming the tv show and all of that stuff yeah we'll give you a little behind the scenes yeah on that. yeah so it's going to be a good time and we still really enjoyed ourselves but we had to go into the casinos and stuff to stay cool oh yeah if you guys have any tips obviously you know different rvs have different things you can do we would love to hear about those. Put them down in the comments below. Other people can read those and get other good tips also. That's and, right. And we can learn about them. Our biggest tip is avoid don't the heat. Do it. Don't go to Vegas in the summer. <laughs> Just don't do it. Daisy wanted to say that she really didn't like the heat either because she had to stay inside all day and she had to be carried over to the doggy park because she couldn't even walk on the ground because <laughs> it was so hot, right? She's so bad. She's not good with cameras. <laughs>